Hey, this is Sarah, and this is a video I'm creating that you guys asked for. Um, I'm running a little contest at my Instagram page where I'm asking you for input, like what do you want to learn from me? And so this is one of the requests, which was, how do I get my creative ideas? And one of the things that I've learned um, through reading many books, watching many YouTube videos, is that um, as creative people, are the things that we love and that we're passionate about, those are the things that really create, help us to create our body of work. So I always like to think of back when you were like eight, nine, 10 years old, what were you obsessed with? For me, I was super into that show, uh, Wild Kingdom <laughs> uh, by Mutual of Omaha, I think brought to you by Mutual of Omaha. So wild animals have always been something that really inspires me. We were not allowed to watch, we were allowed to have one hour of TV a week and that was almost always the show I chose. Sometimes I would choose Disney, but uh, usually it was Wild Kingdom. So that was is a huge influence on me. Um, the other thing would be books. Um, and this may sound strange, but books and writers really inspire me and so often um, their ideas or their quotes or things they, you know, people that I admire who've written say um, will often, you know, inspire a piece of work like an essay or a, um, maybe even a, an illustrated quote. I've been doing that lately with Anne Lamott's um, words because she is so chock full of wisdom. If you haven't listened to her podcast with Tim Ferriss, Tim Ferriss interviews her. So good. Um, the other thing I was obsessed with was doll houses. And really what that was, was the beginning of a romance with homes, houses, interior design. Um, I am obsessed with that. I'm noticing right now there's like a, <laughs> there's like a vinyl tablecloth like hanging or my background is maybe not so perfect, but um, I've always been obsessed with homes, houses, how they're decorated, how people live in them. Like it just lights me on fire. Um, but really some of my favorite designers are sort of maximalists. Um, I'm a huge fan of Mario, Bu yeah, Mario Buwata, who was like a 1980s uh, designer in New York City. And he would do these rooms that were just layer upon layer. And his really design roots come from English country design, which is really these old, old houses that, you know, sometimes the wallpaper is coming off the wall riddled with books, like hundreds of books are usually in these kinds of interiors. Um, everything looks really well lived in and loved, like the dogs are welcome on the couch and usually there's a fire burning and, you know, I just, there's something about those homes that I love. And so often I will draw from, you know, vintage textiles really inspire me, um, chintz, floral, designs from those eras, um, turn of the century, like 19, early 1900s. And that's, I also loved, you probably know, like illustrations from the early 1900s, late 1800s of animals and birds and creatures of all kinds, because I find them to be um, just the coloration of them and they're just so elegant. And I kind of like, I also, um, some of my other loves when I was growing up was Steve Martin. So my sister Maria is a comedian and uh, my one of my first albums I got was the Steve Martin album. And I mean, we listened to that thing, Born, I think it was called Born, Born to be Wild, was that the name? And we listened to that thing over and over and over and over. And half the jokes I didn't understand because they, some of them had adult themes. Um, but I found him to be absolutely hilarious and his absurd kind of view of the world is also something that really inspires me because I feel like a lot of my work is aimed at transformation and I feel like transformation is hard work. And so if we can um, find some humor and some silliness in that, um, it's a real gift. Um, but you can see, if you look at all my work, you can see all those elements that I was just talking about, like my most recent book, which involves Alice the Elephant on the cover. It's got, this was sourced from public domain art, Alice. She's on a surfboard that was added by my amazing graphic designer who helped me with this book, Charlie. Um, and then this floral was also a public domain 19th century uh, or 18th century illustration uh, that we were able to find. Um, so that's one example. Um, 
here's another example. This Kim, this was created by another person that's influenced me, Frantic Meerkat and her partner, Mincing Mockingbird. Her hilarious. They do these amazing illustrations. Um, Mincing Mockingbird does amazing illustrations with hilarious dark titles, and they're all based around birds. Um, I love like old school lettering, like any kind of typography I find is really fun. And I like things that have like a handmade layered collage um, feel because I am obsessed with John Darian, who's a decoupage artist um, out of New York and his shop is like, it's like an imaginarium of wonder and, and magic. It's so incredible. Um, so just if you're trying to figure out your creative voice or where to get your ideas for a new project or for a project, maybe you're going to do a hundred day project. Look at what like really enchants you. Like look at what you've pinned on Pinterest or look at like if you cut things out of magazines and stuff and save them, look at what that is. Like who do you return to again and again for visual inspiration? Um, what were you passionate about ages eight to 10? Like, do you have any diaries or notes or photos from that time where you can kind of look at your bedroom and see what, what were the posters that you hung on the wall? These are the things that really can fuel our inspiration for life. Um, because I think we have our soul at that age and it is not, um, it's not full of all these layers of rules and regulations, which we gain later in life. Um, I am staring at this, this, um, this is one of the, for my recent 100 day project, um, it says the subtle art of not giving a fuck. And this kind of combines all the things I was just talking about. It's sort of like English country wallpaper from a house you might see. This crazy amazing fish who looks pretty functified and looks like he really does not care what you think. <laughs> which is a very freeing attitude when you're creating. Um, not to worry about what other people are gonna think, just do it for the fun of it. Um, and at the same time, I think I've learned from uh, a wonderful creator on Skillshare, well, he's on Instagram too, called Andy J Pizza. <laughs> he reminds me that we may make art in its isolation, but it is when we share it with others that is truly awesome, especially if a connection is forged. Like there is nothing better than when somebody reads my book and sends me a message and says it gave them the courage to um, make a move that they've been longing to make for a long time. Or somebody writes me and says, I have to get that, you know, this design with a t-shirt on it because it's just resonating with me so much. Because I think as, humans, we long for social connection. So um, I hope this has been inspiring and I hope it gets you writing lists of things you're passionate about so that you can make whatever it is you're going to make next. So thanks for watching. And if you would like more inspiration, please join my, um, my mailing list. And if you do so, there is a guided meditation you'll get access to that'll help you uncover your gifts if that's something you're interested in doing. Okay, well, thanks for watching.